Good morning. Pastor Sean here on Thursday, April 15th with your morning prayer. So let us begin. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall declare your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Alleluia. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. O come, let us worship him. O come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to him with songs of praise. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the depths of the earth. The heights of the mountains are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hand formed the dry land. O come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. O come, let us worship him. All right, our text for today is Luke chapter 5, verses 17 through 39. On one of those days, as he was teaching, Pharisees and teachers of the law were sitting there, who had come from every village of Galilee and Judea, and from Jerusalem. And the power of the Lord was with him to heal. And behold, some men were bringing on a bed a man who was paralyzed, and they were seeking to bring him in and lay him before Jesus. But finding no way to bring him in, because of the crowd, they went up on the roof and let him down through, with his bed through the tiles into the midst before Jesus. And when he saw their faith, he said, Man, your sins are forgiven you. And the scribes and the Pharisees began to question, saying, Who is this who speaks blasphemies? Who can forgive sins but God alone? When Jesus perceived their thoughts, he answered them, Why do you question in your hearts? Which is easier to say, Your sins are forgiven you, or to say, Rise and walk? But that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins, he said to the man who was paralyzed, I say to you, Rise, pick up your bed, and go home. And immediately he rose up before them, and picked up what he had been lying on, and went home, glorifying God. And amazement seized them all, and they glorified God and were filled with awe, saying, We have seen extraordinary things today. After this, he went out and saw a tax collector named Levi sitting at a tax booth. And he said to him, Follow me. And leaving everything, he rose and followed him. And Levi made a great feast in the house, and there was a large company of tax collectors and others reclining at table with them. And the Pharisees and their scribes grumbled at his disciples, saying, Why do you eat and drink with tax collectors and sinners? And Jesus answered them, Those who are well have no need of a, phys- ph- have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. And they said to him, The disciples of John fast often and offer prayers, and so do the disciples of the Pharisees, but yours eat and drink. And Jesus said to them, Can you make wedding guests fast while their bridegroom is with them? The days will come when the bridegroom is taken away from them, and then they will fast in those days. He also told them a parable. No one tears a piece of a new garment and puts it on an old garment. If he does, he will tear the new, and the piece from the new will not match the old. And no one puts new wine into old wineskins. If he does, the new wine will burst uh, the skins, and it will be spilled, and the skins will be destroyed. But new wine must be put into fresh wineskins, and no one after drinking old wine desires new, for he says, the old is good. In many and various ways, God spoke to his people of old by the prophets, but now in his last days, he's spoken to us by his son. So this, again, continues on this uh, introduction, I guess, to Jesus' ministry and uh, the the reaction that he gets from people and kind of the the beginnings of of what we see as his mission and what he's come to do. Uh, Because at first there was the, uh, just the contrast in the the receptions he was getting, where in one area he was, you know, they wanted to kill him, and another area they kind of flocked to him and wanted to prevent him from going on. And and here we have... um, you know he's he he's uh, teaching. Where he's he's teaching, and Pharisees and teachers of the law were sitting there, so they're they're receiving his teaching, and um, and the power was uh, of the Lord was with him to heal. So people are bringing him, bringing people to to be healed. So the Pharisees and the, the scribes and the and teachers of the law are witnessing this whole thing. They're hearing him teach. They see him doing these miraculous things. It's like okay, everything's fine. There's no grumbling yet. 
But then he sees, um, you know, there's this thing with the guy being lowered down from the roof, um, and uh, he, he says, uh, man, your sins are forgiven you. And that's when all hell breaks loose, because they're, they freak out and like, oh, you're uttering blasphemies. Who can forgive but God alone? And um, so then there's this whole thing about, you know, which is it easier to say? I mean, it's easier to say your sins are forgiven, right? Because if I say stand and walk, I mean, if, if I have no authority to do that, then, I mean, it's, it's you know, you, you don't see it and it doesn't happen. So he says, get up and walk, and they see, like, oh, well, it's, he has authority to do that. He has authority to forgive sins, et cetera, et cetera. Um, the cool thing, that, and this, this always gets me. I'm not. I, I just think it's a, it's a fun thing, and I'm sure. I'm sure I, I covered this last year <laughs> when this reading came up. Eh, oh well, it's a good. It's good. Is I just find it so fascinating that, um, you know, the the these some men bring their friend or or this guy it doesn't necessarily be their friend, and uh, they they want to bring him to Jesus because they know he can heal them. He can heal him. So they're so desperate to get this guy in front of Jesus, and it's, it's so um, crammed full of people that they go up to the roof and then lower him in from the uh, from the ceiling tiles. And what we have here is uh, when when he it says when Jesus saw their faith, he said, "Man, your sins are forgiven you." Now. In general, this isn't a big shock because oftentimes when people come to Jesus and they they appeal to him and he says and and he, and he saw their faith or or when he when he witnessed their faith faith he says he'll say something like your faith has made you well your faith has saved you um, your your sins are forgiven and it's always kind of this one to one thing where he sees the faith of the person in front of him and he reacts to it or um, or something like that. But here, he actually sees their faith. Now, it's not exactly clear if he's referring to their, as in, let's say there's two other guys and the sick and the, the, the paralyzed man. So, it, does that mean Jesus saw the faith of all three of them? Or the faith of just the two who brought him? Um, either way, I don't think it really matters because it doesn't say the man saw his faith as in the one who was paralyzed. He saw their faith, plural. So uh, the cool thing, and, and he sees, and if you want to look at, he sees the faith of the two guys who brought him. What's amazing about that is that Jesus' response to the faith of those guys turns to the paralyzed man and says, your sins are forgiven you. And we, we definitely see in the text here that this is the response that he has. And it's just such an incredible thing, and I, I, I've never really heard too many, um, I can't recall very many sermons that, that kind of focus on that aspect, which I think is like one of the biggest major things going on here, is, is how we see that, you know, our faith we, um, has implications on other people. And I mean, it's such a maybe maybe people don't make a big deal about it because it is kind of a basic concept. You know, we're 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 called to pray for everybody. You know, so pray for the healing of of your friends, you know, people who you don't know. You know, you hear about somebody, you have no idea who they are, but they could use our prayers. Okay, so you pray for them. You know, you pray that God would would do do something incredible in their life. Whatever. We pray for people we hear on the news who are you know going through tragedies. We we pray for all sorts of people. So the idea that that you know we pray to God and he intercedes and, and acts upon hearing prayers. That's, that's like a basic kind of thing, but it's just so cool to see how, you know, it's the faith of these guys who, who they know enough to bring this man to Jesus. He is, they know that Jesus is the only one who can help. And he sees their faith, turns to this man and says, your sins are forgiven you. Um, which is such an awesome encouragement for us, especially when we're dealing with, um, People who are close to us, people, you know, family, friends, whoever, who are not Christian, who are not believers. Uh, maybe they were, and now they're no longer. And you know, and it's just that that kind of that terrible feeling that you have because you, you want so desperately for them to to embrace their faith, to to come to faith, or or to return to their faith. And you know, it's just it's such a heartbreaking thing. And this is such a a. a an awesome encouragement for for anybody feeling that because 
you know, we can intercede on their behalf. We can lift them up in prayer. We can turn to Jesus and lift them and take them to Jesus and say, Jesus, please, please, please. And Jesus turns, you know, in, in answering these prayers, can turn to them and say, your sins are forgiven. I mean, that that's what he does. He forgives sins. Um, and so it's just such an awesome kind of reminder that uh, this is what we do. You know, and, and so it, it really, all we can do is bring people to Jesus. And that's not to say to tell them about Jesus, but to bring their needs and concerns to Jesus in prayer, even, uh, to intercede on their behalf and uh, lift them up to Jesus and, and trust that Jesus will do what Jesus does, which is to love sinners, to forgive sinners, to uh, wrap his arms around sinners. You know, just like the Pharisees are, are freaking out, oh, you're eating and drinking with sinners. And Jesus is like, yeah, that's who I came for. Um, so yeah, it's it's if 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 this is you, where you're you're you have that kind of that heartbreak of somebody who you love who is uh, fallen away from the faith or or never even there, pray for them, um, keep them in your prayers, and and trust trust Jesus to be Jesus, trust Jesus to love and care for sinners, um, and that should give you a great measure of of much needed comfort. So great great thing that comes out of that text today. Okay, well, let's pray. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, Almighty and Everlasting God, you've safely brought us to the beginning of this day. Defend us in the same with your mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all of our doings being ordered by your governance may be righteous in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Now, taught by our Lord and trusting his promises, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless and preserve you. Amen. Well, blessings to you this day. Uh, I hope this uh, gives you a great measure of comfort. If that's... uh, where you're coming from, um, and and if if that's not where you're coming from, I still hope it gives you comfort and just an encouragement to uh, to bring all your cares to Jesus, uh, so that He might uh, attend to you. So, until tomorrow, peace be with you.